Hello, hello, this is Jonathan and you're listening to the Johnny Talks Podcast, the place where we help you achieve your financial goals. Hello friends, hope you're having a great day wherever you are, whether that's at the gym, in the car or at home, at least these are the places where I'm listening to uh, podcasts. In today's episode, we will speak about peer-to-peer lending and investing in the stock markets with a strong focus on peer-to-peer lending. Uh, Peer-to-peer lending has been around for uh, the couple, uh, I would say, four or five years, in Europe at least. And um, yeah, it's a form of investment I have not experienced myself with too much. I just recently uh, put some small, uh, a small amount of my investing portfolio in a platform called uh, Crowdester. In order to guide us through uh, this type of, in, um, of investment, I have invited uh, my friend from Finland, The Wealthy Finn, who has uh, four to five years under his belt now about investing. So he, he will um, help us understand what is peer-to-peer lending, what the risks are, what to look for, and why he does it actually. Why does he, in addition to his stock portfolio, invest in peer-to-peer lending? This episode is for you if you want to learn more about investing in peer-to-peer lending platforms in general, and as well if you're keen to learn from real hands-on experiences about what it is to invest and to diversify uh, your assets. So, without further ado, I propose we go straight for the interview. Hello, Mr. Wealthy Finn. How are you doing today? Hello, Jonathan. Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you for asking. Excellent, excellent. Nice to have you. Uh, we've been uh, chatting on... Um, on Twitter and uh, mm-hmm. I think so so can you tell us a little bit about yourself because you're you're based in Finland and you, you blog yes. about personal finance sure yeah um, so I, I have a, a, a regular job that takes most of my do- time between well it's a regular nine-to-five uh, type of job but then um, outside of that I, I do blog yes about um, investing in, in general um, but yeah well, that's me um, Anything specific that you want me to say? Well, that's good. But uh, the reason why I invited you is mostly because you are uh, you seem an expert on peer-to-peer lending, or at least you're very heavily invested in peer-to-peer lending. That's what I wanted to discuss with you and as well to present to, to my audience, to our listeners, uh, to, to get to know more what, uh, yeah, what is peer-to-peer lending. Right. So yeah, you're right. I've um, uh, most of my wealth currently is in peer-to-peer lending instruments. Um, so for those who are not familiar with with this term, it's um, an investing uh, mechanism or investing instrument where you um, lend money directly to to loans that others uh, other peers such as yourself might might uh, um, borrow. Um, also, peer-to-peer lending is used for um, kind of crowd lending uh, um, uh, terms. So, so you're lending to businesses, and there, peer-to-peer lending might be a slightly misleading term, but people mm-hmm. seem to be using that as well. So, you finance uh, finance loans. Uh, you finance very often. You finance consumer loans. So, um, anything somebody wants to buy, uh, you know, anything, um, and, and you finance those uh, with your own money. Yeah. So, I mean, when I first heard peer to peer, to me, it's a bit like uh, 15, 20 years ago when I started to download stuff on Internet with the, with peer to peer downloads. So it's yeah. uh, it's kind of the same principle, but with lending money. I mean, like uh-huh. you, you, you I mean, before we downloaded illegally some music or some videos from each other through a platform and now you lend legally though <laughs> yes yes you do um and and it started very in in a very similar manner um as in you know napsters and 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 all these uh, le- illegal peer downloading uh platforms so <clears throat> it started with a platform basically connecting individuals and the investors and basically there were no other middlemen but mm-hmm. nowadays it's it's developed much further and, and we have platforms such as mintos that actually doesn't um, issue the loans themselves but they basically they um, uh, aggregate together a lot of uh, loan originators and um, loans that they have already issued and then allow refinancing those loans um, uh, through private investors money so it's it's developed but it started from from this uh, very peer-to-peer kind of <laughs> mechanism yes and how long have you been um, 
I mean, participating or investing in those platforms, uh, Mr. Wealthy Finn? Um, I think I started already in 2015 uh, pretty mm -hmm. heavily. Um, before that, I, I was just kind of tinkering around with it. But in, in 2015, I started to really see the potential in that and, and started to experiment more and uh, invest more heavily in, in, in that space. Okay. And what uh, triggered you to, to start investing? Because, you know, it's a bit new, it's a bit different. Even for me, I just started to put some money in a platform. We'll talk a bit mm -hmm. later. So I just started because even at the start of this year, I had no money in peer-to-peer -peer lending. Mm. Well, um, for me, I think what triggered it originally was um, uh, the fact that we had such a long bull market in, in the stock market um, behind us already. And people started to uh, be a little bit careful um, because we were seeing such high valuations in the stock market. And, and people started to think that, is, is this sustainable? Can we mm -hmm. can we really expect the, the kind of long-term um, returns from the stock market um, a, a, as we would, you know, in a normal situation, we, we'd expect. And, and I started to also question that. And And while I don't like the idea of kind of timing the market, you know, which to me uh, um, sounds more like you're you're um, speculating against, or speculating, yeah, and, and taking away your capital from the market and kind of sitting on cash and waiting it, waiting for it to crash. So that's not um, something that I believe uh, you're able to do. But what what I kind of um, what I saw in peer to peer uh, instruments was a very high potential for interest um, with a high risk as well. So it's a, it's a very um, risky investment like stocks are, but it's a very different mechanism, in my opinion, in the way that the kind of risks materialize. So I wanted to um, have something else in addition to or, or kind of next to my stock portfolio mm -hmm. so that if um, the the stock market would start to perform a little bit worse and, and people started to maybe evaluate uh, uh, value the, the uh, companies less, then um, I would have some other instrument that would also be high risk, high reward um, in addition to stocks. Okay, very good. I see. So it's so you wanted to diversify but my question is then because if you have a stock portfolio mm -hmm. i mean you can invest in various companies for example in the energy sector in the luxury sector in i don't know retail uh, sector i mean that's right. quite diversified already so why again next to that diversify in peer-to-peer -peer lending well um to me of course Uh, diversifying, uh, diversifying in the stock market is is already very good, and you should definitely do that if if you have a stock portfolio. But that's um, it's a, in my opinion, it's a very limited view to diversifying. To me, I mean, I have a, a an extremely diversified p portfolio. Um, it includes all sorts of wacky stuff, um, and stocks is just a, a very small component of that. And and the reason that I um, I say that or, or, or the reason that I do that is that if we look at uh, stock markets um, as a whole, then um, there's a lot of um, you, you, you can't really diversify enough or, or it's very difficult to diversify enough within only stocks, because when when the global economy starts to uh, go down, then whether you have cyclical, acyclical, defensive, whatever stocks, it will uh, follow yeah, the same trend. Kind exactly, of, right? exactly. Mm -hmm. It correlates heavily. So I wanted to have something that doesn't correlate so heavily with the overall stock market. Yeah, and just for the listeners, correlating is just following the same pattern or the same, uh, mm. yeah, the same trend. Okay, so then you so you invest to in peer to peer just to diversify your risks. That's very yeah. good. In peer to peer lending, there are a few platforms here in Europe that we uh, that we can all invest in. I mean, one mm. of the um, in during my own research, and I think I posted that on Twitter. I was talking about Mintos. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the the most uh, used one. And I think many people are, that I have invested are satisfied with Mintos. And mm -hmm. there are a few ones. So can you describe to us a few of those platforms like Mintos, Cordestor, Investio? Can you tell us a little bit what those platforms are and what the expected returns are? Right. So um, 
Mindos is is a is a very popular one, and mm-hmm. it's it's um, what I like to call a, a loan broker platform. I'm not sure if that's the correct term in their their opinion, but let me open that up a little bit. So they they have a lot of um, loan originators all over the the Europe at least that they work with, and um, probably outside of Europe too. And 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 uh, they let you as a, an individual investor to refinance loans that the loan originators have already financed to to their um, customers. So basically, Mintos um, uh, off kind of offloads the risk also to those loan originators, and they don't carry uh, the the credit risk themselves. Oh, okay. The loan, yeah, the loan originators they carry that. Um, so that's how many of these new platforms work, because then that operational model doesn't require such a heavy balance sheet, because you you don't need to you know loan uh, yourself. You just connect uh, loan originators. Um, that's very very uh, typical. Um, you mentioned Investio uh, and Crowdestor. Those are uh, more uh, kind of business crowd lending type of uh, platform. So small businesses, they um, they uh, come to raise a loan from, from those platforms and the platforms, um, I'm not exactly sure if, if they uh, always um, finance them the, themselves. I believe that they, they um, uh, the, the loans usually have another component as well. Um, and then the platform, sometimes they, they put a little bit of their own skin in the game and then they raise the rest from, from the, the individual investors. But these ones go directly to the, um, to the businesses and there's no uh, middlemen in, uh, in, in those in the same sense as, as in uh, Mintos, for example. There are some um, other uh, um, platforms such as, for example, Sw- uh, Swaper, I, I believe that they want to call them, um, which is also a, a consumer lending platform, but they handle um, or they issue the loans themselves. So um, that's a very interesting method. It's it's one of the first and, and the original kinds of ways to do this. And, and there, the, uh, um, there you have to really believe that the platform can do that re- credit risk uh, uh, modeling themselves really efficiently because they carry the the credit risk then yeah okay and and talking about risk those companies offer usually a high return such as mm-hmm. 8 10 and crowdester i've seen even 15 17% those are businesses right but for example for mintos do you have any stories or anecdotes that you invested in one of those loans and that you didn't get the return the expected return or that you didn't get that there was a credit default or something well um i believe that there was one case this year um i don't remember the name of the loan originator now but that was on on mintos where Mm -hmm. um see the the loan originator as i said they they carry the credit risk and if they become insolvent then um uh, you're well to some degree you you might be in trouble which means that when well when the loan originator um they may be you know they they might have a a bad operational model or the credit risk uh, modeling didn't work as as they expected to and and they get they got more losses than than they were prepared to um and then be, well became insolvent in that case they might be facing bankruptcy bankruptcy and if if you as an individual investor if you lend um uh money to to uh loans originated by those uh loan originators then um uh, those that capital is stuck at least for a while be- before yeah. kind of all the all the um, legal stuff is is cleared. Um, so I haven't lost a lot so far. I think I um, there's something like twenty euros or or so um, that is still stuck in in my my portfolio. But I'm still uh, looking at how um, there was a, a loan or- originator from last year that uh, went. Um, I believe it went bankrupt uh, as well, but 
that had quite a quite a lot of um, investors money on them and that was on Mintos as well so yeah it happens um, it, it will happen as well in the future and, and anyway this can happen as well in the stock markets in um, mm. in any type of investment uh, so there, there will be good ones there will be bad ones but on overall as I hear your story you you didn't have you didn't face a lot of uh, of losses. Well, I mean, so far, no, but mm -hmm. we have to remember what kind of market we are in. So it's it's a very still very positive market, and and um, we haven't seen a recession for uh, over you know ten years now. Correct, correct. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's also uh, I think a point you you raised when we talked before that yeah okay those rates the promised rates interest rates are high relatively mm. high we talk about more than ten percent. But how will that perform in the downturn? Will that will it exactly. be the same, or will then more people default on their loans? So this is something, uh, yeah, to to take into consideration if you want to uh, start investing in peer-to-peer -peer lending. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I don't believe that these rates can um, be sustainable. I mean, if if they were, then everybody would have all their wealth in in peer to peer lending instruments right yeah so so in in some mechanism they will um adjust to a more more proper level but but it's still to be seen how that adjustment will happen yeah okay and, and talking about this peer to peer platforms there's a few ones we named already but i think you have some interesting ones such as uh, agricab can you tell us a little bit more <laughs> about agricab yeah, yeah. So um, Agricab is is a very, very funny, uh, very interesting um, uh, platform. They're they're actually an agriculture uh, company in Somalia, mm -hmm. and, and um, they have currently they have at least three t different types of, or maybe actually even four different types of um, investment projects that individual investors can invest in. Um, I. I bought a camel in <laughs> Somalia. Yeah, and, and um, the the camel uh, produces milk, and they they uh, milk the camel and they sell the the milk in the local market. Um, and then um, I get the majority of of the the profits, and then they get a fair share um, of you know they they deduct of course first the, all the expenses, and then they um, uh, we share the profit. Uh, together, so that's very very funny. But they have all other stuff in in the agriculture business in Somalia as well. Excellent. So so it's possible to to invest in camel milk in Somalia. Yes. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty. Uh, it, I consider it very very high risk. Um, it's uh, probably like a third of a percent of my wealth that I have in in that. So I, I wouldn't uh, dare to increase that too much. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can go on in, in Somalia. Just earlier this year, um, some of the payments got delayed and, and uh, mm -hmm. it impacted my investment as well because they had bombings in Mogadishu. Um, you know, their office was completely destroyed and they had to relocate. Luckily, their employees didn't get hurt, but they were actually casualties um, other otherwise, so there's there's all kinds of different risks in that um, space um, that we don't even even understand. Yeah, and uh, what would you? Um, what are the things to to pay attention to if I want to start, or if uh, any of the listeners want to start investing in peer to peer lending? Do you have like a few checkpoints to to look at? Um, well, the first one is is to understand that um, when when you invest in stocks, you actually own a piece of the company. And if the company doesn't go bankrupt, um, that piece of, of the company is, is worth something. Um, and, and similarly, you have to kind of understand that when you're in peer-to-peer -peer lending, um, you need to think about what are the ways that I can actually lose my capital. I mean, if you don't get some interest for, I don't know, a month or two, that doesn't really bother you necessarily that much. But if you lose your capital, then then that's going to hurt a lot. And and the mechanisms in peer to peer lending are such that um, often things go really well or when they go bad, they go catastrophically bad. Mm -hmm. So um, think about how the risk will materialize and how much are you even capable of or taking risk? Because there there is a lot of risk. And, and when we talk about, you know, high re uh, returns like 
12 percent and up, um, there's got to be a lot of risk. So, so kind of pay attention to that more than than the interest rates that that companies are are claiming that you might get. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a fair point. It's um, that you mentioned because people might be attracted to 17 percent, 15 percent. Yeah, it's better than my uh, savings account or than the stock market. Mm. But actually, the the higher the interest rate, the lower you sh the 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 less money you should put in. But I will mm. not I will not stop anybody of putting your money in. But it's just yeah, just there's an invert relation to the amount of money you should put in actually. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for the uh, camel investing, I mean the <laughs> the agri cab, what uh -huh. what is the promised uh, return on that one, for example? Well, they they um, they claim to pay eight percent every quarter. So if you compound that, it, it comes up to something like thirty six percent per annum, uh, which is ridiculous. Um, uh, but so far, I've got uh, um, all those those uh, except for that one time where the bombings uh, affected. So instead of eight percent, I, I think I got six uh, percent. But I'm I'm happy that you know. Um, they didn't lose anybody from the company. Yeah, that's most important than uh, yeah. getting an interest rate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. And so for AgriCab, you invest directly in a company in Somalia or is it through a platform in Europe? How does that work? Um, no, it's it's directly to, through their their site. So um, they, uh, they have a website and you, you sign up on that and then um, you can actually, you can, they have kind of a, a web shop that you can, you can just buy a camel on basically <laughs> yeah so so you can you can do that uh, you can just make make the purchase on online but it's directly through through their own own website there's no middlemen uh on that okay okay talking about all these platforms do you have any what are your your favorite ones or um uh, yeah which one do, would you recommend to anybody starting um that's a very very uh tough question to answer um, I would not go too wild. So uh, anything that states uh, really high interest rates, I would probably stay away from in the beginning. So mm -hmm. this this kind of means that um, Mintos is, is still a very good uh, platform to start with. They are very big. They're very stable. Um, it's it's very um, tough to not diversify on Mintos nowadays um, because of the mechanisms mechanisms that they have in place. So it's it I perceive it as as a safer option to to many others. So if you have to if you if you want to start, um, I would probably look first there. But this, I'm not an inv investment advisor, so you can't really take my word for it. You have to <laughs> research it yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the wealthy fan. Okay, we have all those peer-to-peer -peer platforms and mm -hmm. um, uh, what about taxes how is that regulated do, do I need to report it myself or is that automated uh, how does that work um, yeah so most likely you have to report it yourself so I've, I've worked uh, or I've invested in some platforms in Finland that uh, Finnish originated platforms that they um, they did um, report it for me for for the uh, to, to to the tax office, but most likely when we're talking about these European um, platforms, then they they probably don't um, have a, a working relationship with your local tax offices. So yeah, yeah, you you need to be very careful that you you report your your um, uh, income uh, in, in your tax re reports yourself. Yeah, and and uh, myself, so I. I started to experiment as well with Crowdester and, and they have um, a module where you can export your tax file. I mean, when, yeah. when the time is due. So I will just use that and I will uh, send it to the to the tax authorities here where I live in Luxembourg. And right. um, yeah, so one more thing I wanted as well to mention is that I know there will be some US readers. Uh, so maybe all those platforms, I don't know if they're all accessible to you guys, but at least I listed a few ones, that which I will link in the show notes and peer-to-peer uh, -peer platforms available in the States. So there's Upstart, Finding Circle, Prosper uh, Marketplace, PO Form, Circle Backlending. So there's a few, quite a few uh, there as well. So mm. I will list them all in the, in the show notes if you want to learn more about them. And the same principle and risks as uh, the Wealthy Fin explain apply. Huh? So it, it's the same risk tolerance level you should have, etc. Okay, so we talked about peer-to-peer, -peer, but this is not the first time you invest. 
you have um, invested in the stock market previously. Yeah. Any other ventures, cryptocurrencies maybe, or? Uh... Well, um, yeah, I bought some cryptocurrencies uh, a year ago or so, um, but it, it was a, a very small, small investment. I think I'm, I'm down from from what I bought back then. Um, otherwise, um, I own some forest in Finland. Um, um, also, I, I, I've um, recently bought some solar cells in in South Africa that produce electricity, and I, I get the you know a share of the revenue from mm -hmm. from selling that uh, electricity. Um, yeah, I, I have all kinds of wacky um, <laughs> investments. Yeah, and um, that's very cool. I like to hear that. And um, and talking about stocks, I mean, you have a lot of, in your peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending portfolio, but then the rest is mostly in stocks, I think. Yeah. If yep. I followed your blog correctly. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And any remarks on about the stock markets, mostly index funds or as well stock pickings? Um, I mostly I have in in direct stocks. Um, the um, it hasn't been better than just having everything in index funds. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm, I might be uh, a little bit over the the index, or I might be a little bit less. Um, but but it's it's it has been a lot of work and a lot a lot of effort, um, a lot of stress maybe even. Um, uh, but uh, the the results are are not really very stellar. So. Um, I think going forward, I have to question uh, myself that should I should I be more in the index fund uh, side or, or or continue with the direct stock pickings. What I do like about stocks, like picking direct stocks, is that it forces you to really think about what you're doing. Um, you're not just going with the herd and and uh, doing whatever every, everybody else is doing, but you're actually trying to understand the the industry and the company what they're doing um so it, it, it kind of teaches more and maybe develops at least myself as an investor more than than just picking um the the index funds um yeah yeah but not everybody might think like you i think you have a very good approach and that's how i think everybody should but some people they will uh, <clears throat> they will buy a stock because their neighbor or their uncle said oh, yeah i bought some i don't know what uh, stock x Uh, mm -hmm. Or I bought some Tesla. Yeah, it's good. Without doing much research, people buy mm -hmm. stocks. Have you seen that around yourself as well? Or uh... um, let's say my friends are pretty um, literate in the in the stock market. So so mostly not not my friends, but I, I do see that happening a lot, and and people kind of going with the flow and jumping the bandwagon mm. a, a lot. But um, so my stock. Uh, pick strategies are, are very value investment or value value investing based. So I look at um, I look at the numbers, the valuations, um, and 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 do kind of the first screening based on that. Uh, which means that I would probably never invest in a Tesla um, or <laughs> or, or uh, probably Google's and Apple's are are even though they they have been really good investments, they are not the kinds that that um, would be picked by my strategy. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you that if if you don't if you don't have a strategy or or you don't know if what you're doing or you're basically making stock investment decisions based on gut and and uh, kind of feelings, then um, index funds are probably a better way to start and at, at least build like a a core, a very solid core around index funds, and then maybe do the the direct pickings with with only a very limited amount mm -hmm. yeah. uh, of your capital. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Very good. And then uh, actually, we're talking about investing, about peer-to-peer -peer lending, about mm -hmm. stocks, about um, yeah, about stock picking, cryptos. But what is the reason for doing all this? What is your reason, uh, Mr. Wealthy Finn? Well, um, I think it first started many, many years ago, over 10 years ago, by just kind of thinking that investing is cool and I want to be very good at it because people who are very wealthy, they, they like in my mind, uh, that correlated with investing. So I kind of um, 
I figured that I, this is something that I need to learn. And then very quickly, I realized that, hey, and this is, by the way, 2008, when I when I started to to get um, a, a decent salary after graduation, mm-hmm. um, uh, that was the best time to start investing because <laughs> no, you, you could you could have an untrained monkey uh, throwing darts at a, um, a stock um, uh, wall or, or wall of, of these uh, yeah. um, company names and and make stock picks based on that and and they would still make tons on the stock market so it was a gr- it was a really good time to start but uh, I realized back then that hey if, if this would actually continue for let's say 15 years then um, I'd be I'd be a millionaire I'd, I'd um, and if that would and I started kind of playing around with that idea and, and using these compound investment or compound interest calculators that, hey, what would happen if um, and I realized that that there is a lot of potential, a lot of power in the in the compounding uh, effect. So then uh, it, it kind of took me uh, with it. Um, and uh, I've been on, on, on that road since. And my ultimate goal uh, is to, well, perhaps not retire, retire, um, but to at least become so financially independent that mm-hmm. um, I can you know, spend my time in any way that I want. And I probably will continue working, but I want to be able to do it on my own terms and, and not be tied to, let's say, an employment uh, in, in the traditional sense. Yeah, so that's what that million or um, millionaire yeah. status could bring you, the, this freedom to choose whatever you want. That's Is that what I... Uh... Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, very cool. No, no, that's interesting. I like that. Okay, so thank you, uh, Mr. Wealthy Finn. That was good. Thank uh, you. Thank you for the valuable tips and the... Yeah, and your insights, I think they're very helpful and valuable for uh, for the audience. And uh, I think before we, we head off, I, I like to ask my guest, it's a new, something new I just started, is three quick fire questions. Okay. So number one, what has been your best investment so far? Um, so does it have to be like a, a financial investment? Can it be something else? It can be anything. It can be exercising. It can be... Sp- Reading, whatever, uh, spend buying a book of ten ten dollars. Okay, um, I think um, I've uh, like throughout my whole life, I've invested a lot in learning, and I think that it's it's finally, well, not finally, but it's it's uh, it's paying off really nicely in, in uh, uh, by now. So, and what I mean by that is, I have I feel like I have a very diverse set of uh, skills, like technical skills, but also, you know, math skills, whatever. And um, I feel like investing in 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 myself and in those um, those skills, um, like a diverse set of set of skills has enabled me to do um, so many things in my life um, that that seems very, very tricky to many that that um, that, you know, find something too complicated or too too difficult. So I'd say that that probably has enabled me to do a lot. Mm-hmm. Excellent answer. That's, uh, I like that. And then second quick question. What is your favorite book or uh, any book that you would recommend to anybody? And it doesn't uh, like the first question. It doesn't need to be um, linked to finance. So it can be any mm. book. Um, that's, that's a very good question. I think maybe, um, the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. I really like that book. Maybe not the, um, the second last, uh, book of, 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 of them, but the, especially the first ones, um, they were, um, uh, Douglas Adams is, is such an amazing, well, was such an amazing writer. So yeah, that one definitely. If you haven't read it, go and read it. Such a good, don't look, don't watch the movie. The movie isn't really that great, but the books the books are really good. Okay, okay, I'll make sure to to have a look. I haven't read those neither. Mm. And then the last question: You get handed ten million euros. What do you do with that money? Um, that's actually not a very difficult question for me. I, I think I've uh, <laughs> thought about that so many times. Yeah. <laughs> 10 million euros is um, is the amount that would be, you know, I would be set for life, mm-hmm. but um, I would definitely 
uh, invest all of it. I, I would definitely only live off the interest and the dividends or, or whatnot. Um, but investing 10 million euros in, in this uh, market, well, that, that's, that's a really tough thing to do. It, I probably wouldn't just you know, pour it into a uh, stock market tomorrow. Um, I would probably devise a, a plan to um, diversify it over, well, different assets, different um, uh, geography uh, areas, but also time. So it would take me a couple of years to, to invest that. But yeah, I would invest it all and live off the interest. Okay, that sounds good. So, um, Mr. Wealthy Finn, thank you again so much. I think it was very interesting. Thank you. And I think you have more to tell on your blog. So where uh, can the listeners find you, actually? Ah, yeah. So um, my blog is at www.thewealthyfin.com. That's Finn with two N's. Um, yeah, yeah. please please come and, and have a read and a comment on the blog if you like it. Well, if you don't, then, well, then don't comment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, any social media? Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter as well. The handle is the wealthy Finn. Um, yeah, please come there. Uh, I do have a Facebook page as well. Um, you'll find me with the same name. Yeah, but those those two are are my main uh, channels. Pinterest, yeah, but uh, not not that active on Pinterest. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So everybody, so thanks for listening. Thank you so much. And thanks to the wealthy Finn for participating in this episode. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a great day. Bye. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you learned something from it and discover more about peer to peer lending and have found out if it's something for you to invest in or if you want to leave it on the side for now. I know we went sometimes into more technical discussions about investing. So let me know if you want to know more about some uh, specific terms or. Um, yeah, if you want more understanding on specific point, just leave me an email, john at johnnytalks.com, and I'll help the best I can. We are all here to learn, and that's why I'm doing this for. <laughs> As usual, I jotted down my key takeaways of this episode. So here they are. So first, peer-to-peer -peer lending is risky and it will require you to do some research up front. Of course, if it's something new, yeah, please don't base yourself solely on this interview. Just do some more research um, Go to articles or go check on Investopedia. Try to understand if it's something uh, clear for you or not. Uh, next point is, um, yeah, when you see a high interest rate, a high interest on your loan, uh, yeah, be, be, be careful because it might seem attractive at first. You see 15%, 17%. You say, oh, yeah, we'll get a high return on my, uh, on my investment. But... Yeah, it also means that it's quite risky. So there is a higher risk of default. So the higher the risk, the less money you should put in. Next one. So one of the, the great benefit of diversifying next to stock markets or real estate and uh, to invest in peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending is that this type of investment is uncorrelated to, to the stock market, meaning that it doesn't follow necessarily the same trend as the stock market. So when the stock markets go down, your peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending investments might still be stable or grow. It doesn't follow the same, uh, the same pattern. The next point is about stock markets. If you're new to the stock market, the best way to, uh, to get started is to invest in low-cost index funds. This is not financial advice. But index funds are great as they offer broad market exposure, meaning you're diversified at low costs. And then you can move on to uh, individual stocks, which brings me to the next point. And I really liked uh, the wealthy Finn's approach here because he really tries to understand the business, how the company works, more than just looking at the market performance and the returns. And last but not least, don't try to time the market. I know it sounds uh, sexy if you... Just put your money into a company and um, after the third quarter result, the stock goes up 20% and you, 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 you will feel smart, you will feel good and maybe even overconfident in your abilities to invest. If it happens to you, congratulations, of course, but don't use this as your uh, investing strategy. Time in the market will beat timing the market. 
So that was it for today. Thank you so much for listening. It really means a lot to me. Make sure you subscribe in Apple Podcast. And of course, please do not hesitate to contact me. If you have any questions or feedback, send me an email, john at johnnytalks.com or connect through social media at Johnny Talks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And amigos, once more, thanks so much for listening and I'll speak to you next time.